Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between on the pixelated amalgamation of some guy. I'm not sure what amalgamation means, but I like saying it, because it's a fun word. Either way, welcome back to Bizarre Earthquake. I am on to day three now. I don't know what that is in Turkish. Ooch. That's what Google says, but hell, can you trust it? There's like an umlaut and a squiggly C in that damn word. I don't even know where to begin with that one. But I know where to begin with Bizarre Earthquake. With this, right here. We're watching it, folks. We're having an earthquake, yeah. We're going insane, yeah. California earthquake has been a shaking our brains, yeah. We're having an earthquake. Our song link is fun, yeah. So it's day three and we're playing as Boar. And much like every day in this game, we start off by walking downstairs. But this time, we get to walk past the clearly still constipated can soup. And when we get downstairs, lo and behold, there's a fresh new character for us to meet. So now we get to meet the last character in this game, Recep. Recep? Receipt. I'm calling him Receipt. As you clearly can't see because our main characters are standing in front of him, this dude is some middle-aged guy who's wearing a baseball hat and what appears to be rain boots. I expect he works in the mud a lot. Any hoot, he's a nice neighbor guy to this old lady. He fixes her stuff and gets her groceries and all that and is all around an excellent guy. But after being introduced to Recep, our characters go outside to the jeep because they got a full day of earthquaking in front of them. But oh no, something's amiss. So the jeep's out of fuel now because old Boar took exactly one, or maybe two liters, at the most, out of it. Now I'm serious here. You see in the puzzle where Boar siphons off the gas from the jeep, he goes into the kitchen and takes a two liter to fill up the gas with. Which sounds really dumb to begin with, because I'm pretty sure gas melts plastic. But hey, it worked briefly. But apparently, that was the entire fuel contents of this Jeep's gas tank. So either it's insanely efficient, or Kansu doesn't bother to pay attention to the little E thing on her gas gauge. So the lack of fuel is going to throw a monkey into Kansu's plan, which makes her very upset. Because you see, the other Earthquake people are already off doing Earthquake stuff while she's sitting around here with an empty gas tank. And this is a problem, because as we all know, canned soup hates the rival seismologist people, because I'm starting to think seismology works a lot like Highlander. There can be only one. But Highlander references aside, I am burying the lead. Now this is where the game gets very strange with the relationship between Boar and canned soup. And I know that may sound like an understatement, but this is like the big confrontation right here. You see, Can Soup is so upset that Boar siphoned gas out of her Jeep that she starts going at him. She's like, I told everyone about your skills, but look what you did to me. And Boar's all like, oh, chill out. And Can Soup's like, oh, hell no. I even told everyone that you lost your parents. You never gave up. Everyone appreciates you now thanks to me, which is just... A very bizarre reaction to have to someone taking gas out of your tank. It's like, yeah, I betrayed your confidence and told your private affairs to a bunch of complete strangers that I hate anyway. But yeah, screw you. I'm telling you about something bad I did to you because you did something bad to me. Yeah, then it gets weirder. And canned soup's like, you know what? I don't regret telling everyone your dirty secret. Because you know what? I felt like you would disappoint me. So I told them your secret. Damn, can soup overreact much? It's like the dude ate the last Oreo and she's all like, I murdered your parents. It was me, not the earthquake. I came into their room while they were sleeping and shot them in the head. I can't even begin to understand why Can Soup is doing any of this. I get why she'd be mad. 
that Bohr didn't ask to take the gas out of the gas tank. But, you know, if he didn't do that, they wouldn't have any power. So that would kind of suck. So it just seems like to me that Kansuf is just a terrible person. I get why it'd be frustrating, but Jesus, this overreaction and just tearing into Bohr for doing a good thing at the end of the day makes her seem like just a huge asshole. How can we have any sympathy for this character that's a jerk to another character in a completely disproportionate way? But hey, on the plus side, at least Bohr stands up for himself in a kind of broken English way. Yeah, I gotta read this aloud. You compare my most sensitive feeling with fucking gasoline. Shame on you. But then he limps in with this. After saying, shame on you. He's all like, get out of here. He's like, yeah, good start. You go, Bohr. Stand up for yourself, boy. Go wherever you want. He's like, yeah, yeah, you tell her. You quit right now, Bohr. I will fuel your car and bring it up to oh damn you're still a lap dog oh i mean i get it, you angry but you're still helping her if anything you should be like fuck you i'm going to fuel up your goddamn jeep i'm taking it back to istanbul and you could take the greyhound back home what what is that too good for you what you can't take the greyhound i took the greyhound here at midnight you know who's on the greyhound at midnight you don't want to know who's on the greyhound at midnight because you could get stabbed if you know who's on the greyhound at midnight yeah, the whole dramatic confrontation just kind of fizzles out with Boar yelling at Kansu. And Kansu's all like, oh, I'm sorry I was a dick to you, but okay, whatever, since you're going to help me out anyway. Yeah, I'll take the seismology stuff and just do earthquake things while you run around doing errands for me still. So in a way, Boar achieved nothing other than yelling at Kansu, and Kansu still gets everything she wants and has everything her way. Yeah, this seems like a very uneven relationship, with one side constantly taken and the other side constantly given. Yeah, and then the game limps in with this weak-ass puzzle. How are you gonna get the fuel? Oh, the nice farmer dude, he's just gonna give it to you. You hitch a ride on his tractor, go to his house, and take some gas from him. <laughs> I just feel like this moment was a little bit wasted. But hey, alright, we done his boar. We got gas, and now we're going to meet back up with Kansu. Speaking of Kansu, this is what she was doing while Boar was being her lapdog. So while Kansu tries to attempt to redeem herself slightly by lamenting the fact that she was a dick to Boar for no good reason, it still doesn't change the fact that she seems like she's just a big, fat, smelly dick. But any hoot, she finds a crack that looks like a path again, and then sure enough, Boar shows up. and proceeds to rinse and repeat what he did with the last crack that looked like a path they found. He climbs down in it, except you don't see it this time, because the game's budget is starting to show. Boar's like, hey, I climbed down there, there was totally an artifact in this bomb I found. Whoa, what a coincidence. So at this point, Boar's pretty damn adamant that the bombs are causing the earthquakes, which seems, well, pretty damn obvious considering every fault line they found has a bomb in it. I'm just saying, sometimes there's a coincidence, and sometimes there's, oh yeah, there's a bomb being set off to cause big-ass cracks in Turkey. I'm sure NATO will approve. But I guess Can Soup's kind of playing Scully to our molder here. But she still says this very bizarre line that really makes me believe that Can Soup does not believe earthquakes are natural phenomenons. She's like, I am a person who think earthquakes are not natural. Again, I don't know how else to interpret that other than we got a seismologist here who does not believe that earthquakes are natural phenomenon. And that's not really a joke here. I'm really starting to believe that this is what Kansu thinks. Moreover, I don't even know what to think of these characters anymore. Because, what, five minutes ago, they were at each other's throats. Which is making me wonder if this is a common occurrence in their relationship. Like, do they always lash out at each other and then just make up without saying anything? Just say, Haha, yeah, you betrayed my trust, but hey, we got earthquake stuff to do. <laughs> I'll listen to whatever you say. So, yeah. Kansu's like, yo, I'm gonna go talk to that receipt guy about the local area because, again, we don't got no goddamn Google around here. So we can just Google ancient artifacts in Isma, where used to be the fourth largest city in ancient times. So you think someone probably wrote a goddamn book about the place. But oh well, that's what Kansu gonna do while Boar is gonna walk home because he needs fresh air. So I guess this is his passive aggressive way of saying, hey Kansu, I don't wanna be in the same car as you, but at the same time, I'm gonna really, really inconvenience myself because I really don't have the backbone to stand up to you, ma'am. 
So Boar proceeds to wander in the woods, and once again he needs to call in his inner Boar Scout, because in order for him to get home, he has to make a homemade compass, which took me a long time to find. In part because the character moves so goddamn slowly, it takes him forever to walk over to places to look at things, and it takes him forever to pick up stuff. But what made matters all the more complicated was that I had to randomly rub every item up against every single other item because I had no idea where to find the appropriate items. Like I knew I needed a needle to make a homemade compass, but what I didn't know is that I randomly needed to wave a magnet over a book I had in my inventory to pull out a friggin' paperclip. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only way to pull out the goddamn paperclip. You want me to tell you how long it took me to figure that out? How desperate I was at that point in the game? Now, I know you can hear the frustration in my voice, but I assure you, it is real. I hate when adventure games do that. Hey, we're going to hide a random essential item in some other nondescript item and just expect you to wave another item over it because, you know, that's how moon logic works. Oh, my word. It just took a long time to assemble all the necessary items and then... Finally, the character was able to make what he needed to go home. Although, you gotta wonder, are there no roads nearby? How the hell did the Jeep even get here? I mean, there's no tire tracks to follow home? But hey, whatever. We made ourselves a homemade compass. Huzzah! We an Eagle Scout. So it took me about 30 minutes to figure all that out. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but considering this game took me only three hours to beat, that's like a sixth of the game right there. Wander around in the goddamn woods looking for parts for a friggin' compass. But anyway, we ain't done yet as Boar. You see, we have to go back to the hostel and talk to the other professor dude about earthquake stuff. And he spills the beans about why he's here. So the man's working on some formula that's going to allow him to accurately predict when earthquakes are going to occur. That's right, this dude's got some math problem that is going to be able to help him forecast earthquakes. That's pretty amazing and very commendable. So why the hell are we supposed to hate on this man? Why the hell is Can Soup even hating on this dude? It sounds like he's working on something that's going to benefit all of humanity, while all Can Soup's doing is what? Trying to stroke her ego? Be the first one to figure out something about this earthquake that's not really explained at all? This guy should be the hero. But no, now Boar, armed with that knowledge, goes tells Can Soup about it, and she's all like, cool, this is what I've been up to. And you know, that's the part where we play as Can Soup, the big fat smelly jerk who I don't like. So Can Soup goes to Farmer Brown and asks him about some ruins nearby, and he's like, oh yeah, there's some ruins nearby. This is where they're at. And Can Soup walks over there and proceeds to write down something she finds on the tombstone. Again, we're just collecting regional information at this point. It seems really peculiar that this side plot's going on, because I'm pretty damn sure the fourth largest city in the ancient world would be a notable historical place, and archaeologists should be hanging out here. But hey, whatever, we back caught up now with Boar. Yup, a lot of the ambient sound in this game is just the same damn birds over and over again. But hey, the mission now as Boar is to figure out when the next earthquake is going to strike because the dudes worked on the formula to predict earthquakes. So yeah, we do some math here. It's not too tricky. It's just math. And to get a hold of the formula is not really that tricky at all. You just ask the guy and he gives you a book that already has it in it. So it's like, I'm not really sure anymore if he's making a formula, if this is his formula, or if this formula is already known, it's just whatever. We're rolling with it. We do math. And now we know exactly when the next earthquake's going to strike. But now the question is where? Well, as Can Soup, we just click around on her computer and eventually figure it out. Because you just click around and the game's like, ah, yeah, you clicked on the right spot. I don't know how you're so clever to figure that one out. So now the heroes are done figuring out where and when the earthquake is going to strike, which is pretty god damn amazing now that I think about it. Can people do that in real life? For real, it's like, this is something that earthquake people do? Because that's pretty cool. But hey, Hoot, they're all like, hey, we know where the earthquake's going to be, so we'll go there tomorrow and I guess watch it. I'm not entirely sure how they're going to prevent an earthquake. But oh yeah, the guy got back to canned soup and she's like, ah, the thing that we found that looks like a bomb is a bomb. And Boar's like, yeah, we already knew that, but cool. Now we have confirmation from an expert who saw some grainy cell phone footage. Right. So hey, it's day four now, and that does it for this entry into my bizarre earthquake over analysis. We're on the last day, folks. Ho <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, we're not. There's one more day. Damn it. Uh... Subscribe.